Hi everyone, welcome to STEM Zebra. My name is Tejas Rakshik. Today we're going to practice solving problems in vectors. This is a part of our high school physics course. If you go to our website at www.stemzebra.org and then click on the link high school physics, uh, you can uh, get to this page and I'll put a link, the full link in the description below. Uh, there on that page, you'll see all the contents of this course including links to the videos, these YouTube videos, and the learning material, uh, which includes PDF copies of these practice problems, as well as the solutions that we are going to write today. Um, in fact, if you want to pause the video now and go to the website and open the PDF of the problems, just so that you can have them next to the video, and you can look at them when you want, uh, please feel free to do that now. These problems, I have designed them keeping in mind specifically physics applications. Uh, if you want to solve more problems, I'm sure you can use either your textbooks or there are lots of other good books out there that uh, you can use to uh, find pr problems for practicing. Now, before we get started, I want to clarify one thing. While writing vectors, I use this notation of i hat and j hat. I'll write it here once again, just to be clear. I talked about this in my theory lesson, which was the, the previous video I did. So the unit vectors, I write them as i and then a hat on top. This is called a hat. Okay, and you call it i hat. Uh, so this is along the x-axis unit vector along the x-axis, unit vector along the y-axis, all that. I call this j hat. And if you had a z-axis, you would call that k hat, but we don't use three-dimensional vectors here. Uh, we, we, we're just sticking to two-dimensional. So this would be called k hat along with z-axis. Now, a lot of books do not use this notation. They just use i, j, k. And here, I'll show you an example. Um, here I have a book. Uh, this is a physics book uh, called uh, Survey and uh, Beechner. Uh, and here's an example. Let me try to uh, autofocus this so that you can see the see it more clearly. It'll take a few seconds to autofocus. OK, there you go. So you can see vectors are written as uh, just i j and k now this is both these systems are correct uh, you should use whichever one your teacher wants you to use or whichever one your uh, book or exam expected to use in print you can use i j k like this because you can see it's it's in bold uh, font right i j and k it's in bold font but when we write it you can't really write bold font right you have to have you know something indicating that hey this is actually um, a unit vector if you just wrote i j and k while writing by hand it could get confusing that's why i personally find it easier to put a hat just to be clear that it's a unit vector so uh, that's the that's the notation we use uh, go ahead and use whichever one you uh, you either prefer or whichever one your uh, your teacher expect you to use okay let's get started I have five problems, and each one has A, B, C, three subsections to total 15. To solve most of these problems, you'll need a calculator. I personally, I mentioned it before, I, I do not use a graphics calculator. I just use a phone. If you have a have a other another calculator or graphic calculator, please go ahead and use it. If you wanted to, 
uh, or if you have another simpler calculator or smartphone, you can use that as well. But make sure you use the scientific uh, scientific calculator, not the normal calculator. Okay, so this is this is the first page. Um, I will. You can open this PDF and look at the problems in details. Uh, but for, for now, I'll just rewrite the problem here just so that you can see it. So the first one is, um, here, I'll start writing. The first one is, find the magnitude of the following vector. So we want to find the magnitude. Okay, the first one says, if a is your vector and I, I write this arrow on top just to indicate it's a vector negative 2 i hat plus 2 j hat this is the cartesian system if you remember uh, cartesian form of writing vectors so i'll i'll remind you of one thing uh, before we move forward and you can you can use this for all the three problems uh, the, the sub problems here which is this. So if you have a uh, if you have a vector like that, let's say r is the magnitude and say a is the x axis, a, a is the x component, or let, let's call let's call it something like uh, a x is the x component and a y is the y component. If that's the case, then r square is uh, a x square plus a y square using Pythagorean theorem. So r is your magnitude. So that means it's square root of a x square plus a y square. I'm not writing parentheses in here. Okay, that's how you find the magnitude of vectors. You can use the exact same principle in all of these problems. Uh, here a vector a is this. So the magnitude quite often for if the vector is like this, then the magnitude is just written as a. Okay, that's quite common. So let's use that uh, as our convention. So a equals, um, or rather square of a using Pythagorean theorem equals square of a equals uh, negative two square plus two square, because this is the ne this negative two is the, uh, is your x component and two is your y component. So square of that is negative square, negative two square is four, uh, two square is also four, right? Square of negative is a positive number, so that's eight. So your a must be square root of eight. Here you can use the calculator if you wanted to, or you know sometimes people just remember what uh, some of these things are, but I don't expect you to do that. So square root of eight is, Hopefully you can read this, um, 2.82 or 2.83. So A is 2.82. As, as always, put, a, put some kind of indicator or box here that shows this is the answer. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Now, all, all three are very similar. So if you do one, the second and the third should be, I think they should be straightforward. Let me give it a try. B is 3J, okay? So what does that mean? What is the X component here and what's the Y component, right? J means that this is the Y component. Three is the Y component. So what is the X component? It's not there, meaning what? It's zero, okay? So that means b, b squared, which is the magnitude of, of b, equals, uh, I'll write it here just to be clear, right? Zero square plus three square. Because you don't have to write this zero square. It's understood that it's, if it's zero, you're not gonna write it. But this is fine as well. So this is just square root of three square and you don't even have to calculate it, right? Three square root of three, uh, square is three. Square root of square is the same. Even if this was negative three, your square root would still be three. So in this case, the magnitude is just three. Now, 
you did all of this, but I want you to remember, just looking at this, you could have guessed this, right? Because this says that you have a vector that's magnitude three in y direction. It's already given here, right? It's in y direction. So this, it's a vector pointing upward in, in an uh, in a x, y coordinate system like this. It's pointing upwards and has magnitude three. That is what it says, because j is the unit vector, meaning it has one magnitude times three is your magnitude is three. Okay. Okay. So to the next one. Um, your vector is. I actually didn't didn't write a maybe a, a name for that vector, but that's okay. You can just assume it's something. Uh, I minus four j so here again your oops sorry all right i'm gonna move it a little bit um here a square equals square root of what is the what's your x component it's one right it just i means i times one so it's one square plus negative four square this clear which is square root of 1 plus 16 negative 4 square root of 16 equals square root of 17 here if you wanted to again you can use a calculator all right so 4.12 That is your answer. All right, let's go to the next problem. We did one already. Number two says write in Cartesian form. So what I've given here is the magnitude, which is r, in this case is five, and Theta is 30, and theta is the is our usual convention, which is uh, angle with the positive x-axis. I'll draw just to be clear, but in all of these three, that's the convention, and you need to write it in the Cartesian form, which is the x, y, or i, j form. Okay, so I'll write it here. First one is uh, R, the magnitude is five, and theta is 30 degree. So how does it look like? It looks something like that. This angle is 30 degree, and this magnitude is five. So if you remember, uh, let's let's call this something, okay, A, AX. So the X component is, let's call this AX is, uh, I'll, I'll remind you of one more thing, that if r, this is r and this is theta, then the x component is this, x component. And what are you gonna call it? ax equals r cosine theta. And this is the y component, this is a y equals r times sine theta. All right, so you can use the exact same principle everywhere. So AX is R cosine theta, which is five times cosine of 30, 30 degree. So what is cosine of 30 degree? Cosine of 30 is 0.86 times 5 is 4.33. Be sure that you are 
while you're doing this, you are in degree, okay, not radian. Sometimes the, the calculator, scientific calculator would be set up in uh, radian, but that's not what you're doing here. So uh, 4.33 is your x. x component, a y, which is the y component, is r sine theta. You can use a calculator here, but you don't really need to because sine of 30 degrees is half. So it's 5 times 0.5, which is 2.5. So your vector, let's call it a, is 4.33 i plus 2.5 j x component and y component that's your answer next one says The, the rest are very similar. So if you got a, if you understood this, you should be able to do them, but I'll I'll just finish it just for the sake of completeness. So R is two and theta is 180 degree. Now you could do all of this here, okay? But you don't really need to. If you draw it, you'll understand that. Right. 180, this is 180 degree. So your vector is pointing in that direction and has a magnitude of two. So I could just go ahead and write it as A equals, the, the, what is the X component? X component is in the negative direction. So it's negative two, I. What's the Y component? There is no Y component. So that's it, this is the answer. But having said that, if you want to do, uh, you know, show all the steps, you could do this whole thing. But I want you to understand how things work, like not just go, th not just uh, go through steps without understanding what you're doing. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could you could do it like this, right? A x is um, r cosine theta, which is two cosine of 180 degree and so 100 and cosine of 180 is negative one negative hopefully you can read this negative one so it's two times negative one which is negative two which is the, the answer we got here and what is a y? It's r times sine theta. And what is what is that? What is sine of 180 degree? If you really understood this, then you may not even need to use the calculator here. Sine of 180 is zero. So this is just zero. That's the exact same answer we got here, right? So A equals negative two I plus zero J, which is, you know, you don't have, have to write it at all. You can just say negative two I, oops. Okay, next one. R is seven and theta is 110. So if I were to draw it, draw it here again, 110 would be something like this. Right, it's greater than 90, so our vector points in this direction. What does this mean? 
So this means that our x component is going to be negative, y is going to be positive. Okay, that should be the answer. I mean, I will have to calculate the exact numbers, but you should get a final answer that shows x component as negative, y as positive. So ax is um, r cosine theta, which is 7 times cosine of 110 degree. So what is cosine of 110? It's, it's negative point, negative of 0 0.34 uh, times, what was it, 7, right? 7 R. 7, so negative 2.39. So this is negative 2.39. This is the x component, okay? So we got a negative x component like we predicted. And a y is r sine theta. This should be a positive number. And th this is 7 times sine of 110. So sine of 110 is 0.939. So it is a positive number times 7 is 6.57. Okay, so this is your answer. A is negative 2.39 I plus 6.57 J. All right, clear? Okay, now to the next problem set. Uh, this problem says for all these you need to solve and as you can see, we're talking about addition and subtraction of vectors here. So you have been given a bunch of A's and B's, right? This is, for this problem, A vector is this, B is that. Uh, you need to find A plus B. Here A and B are given, you need to find B minus 2A. Here A, B, C are given, and you need to find that. So here we're going to do addition and subtraction of vectors. Okay, so for this one, uh, the first one, A is J, just J. B is... 2i minus j. Now, what does this mean, just j? Then what is the x component? It's 0. And j, the, the, j is the y component, which is 1, right? It's a unit vector. So it's really 0i plus 1j. Right? Instead of that, you just write it as j. And the question says, what is a, vector a plus vector b, which is, vector a is that, um, j plus 2i minus j. So remember here, you have to combine the x components while adding or subtracting. You have to combine the x components and combine the y component. So for, for x component, your uh, x component here is 0. So it's 0 plus what is the x component here? It's 2. So 2i plus, plus what is the j, y component for j? It's 1, here 1, and this is negative 1. So what you get is 2i. That's it. The next problem, the next problem has the same a, a and B vectors. So I'll just rewrite them. A vector is J 
b vector is 2i minus j hat and it says what is b minus 2 times a you can use the same rule of arithmetic here that you use for addition uh, what is b b b vector it's 2i minus j and 2 times a is 2 times j right a, a is just j so that's now you got to do the same arithmetic you combine i's together i mean the x components together and then you combine the y components together so the x components here are uh, 2 uh, there's nothing here so plus 0 if you wanted to and i uh, what about the y components? J, it's negative 1. And this is negative 2. So you got to be careful while doing this arithmetic because sometimes there are parentheses and negative number and subtraction. So you got to make sure you remember your rules of arithmetic. So this is 2i. Uh, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 so you can just make this negative 3 negative 3 j that's the answer next one here i have three vectors a is 3i plus j B is B is negative two J and C is eight I and I want you to find A plus two B plus two B minus C. So this is a little bit more, a little bit more complicated, uh, maybe a little bit more addition and subtractions, but exactly the same idea as what you have done here. Right? So instead of adding two, you're adding three, or in this case, adding or subtracting. So how would you do this? So what is A? A is 3i plus j plus 2b. It's so two times b is negative two j minus c which is eight i and again remember you can only add the the i to the i's to i's meaning the x components to x components and y components to y components so this becomes what is the so so, so just put let's put the i x components together so this is three is there a, an x component here there isn't right it's just j so it's zero how about this this is negative eight so it's negative eight times i plus what about j uh, this is one how about this this is two times negative two which is negative four uh, and what about the com y component here there isn't any so it's zero So 3 minus 8 is negative 5. I. Uh, how about this one? 1 minus 4 is negative 3. J. So. so you see, it's the exact same principles. Really, just you have to add or subtract more numbers. That's it. Okay, are we good? on to the next one the next set of problems is about multiplication so if you want I can just quickly do a little refresher on how to multiply vectors 
if you watched my previous lesson uh, about three theory of vectors, you'll know this. But in the Cartesian format, uh, if, if you have A, A given as uh, AX I plus B, uh, I'm sorry, not BX, A, A, Y, J, and then another vector B is B, X, I plus B, Y, J. Then what is the dot product? So we're talking about dot product here, okay? Not not the other cross product. We haven't not done that. So dot product is a dot b is a x plus b x. Oh, I'm sorry. A x times b x plus a y times b y. So you multiply the x components. So x component with x component. And then you add it to this the next term, which is the multiplication of this and that. OK? Uh, by the way, if you had three dimensional vectors, if you had a k term there, then you would do the same thing. You would add the k, the, the product of the k uh, components as well, or the z components. So uh, also, you'll notice that you can only do it Oh, you can only do dot product between two vectors. You cannot do between three vectors. Like you do, you can multiply three numbers, right? But here you cannot multiply three with dot product. Because after multiplication, you get a number. This is a vector. This is a scalar. This is not a vector. You can also write this as the magnitude of A, which I'm going to write it as just A without the arrow, times the magnitude of B times cosine of theta here the theta is this angle between these two vectors so if uh, let's say if a was like that and b was like that if this was a and this was b the a vector and b vector then this would be theta between the two okay not with respect to x axis so if you had them like that then this would be theta Okay, these two are the same terms, and that's what we're going to use while solving some of these problems because it asks you multiply a and b with dot product and then find the angle between the two. So, how will you do that? To find the angle, you, you can use this. Okay, so let's solve them and then I can explain. Okay, so the first one says uh, A is that is J, B is 2i minus J. We had to multiply, do meaning do A dot B, and then also find the angle between the two. So A is uh, J meaning 1j and b is 2i minus j. So what is a dot b? It's the multiplication of x components. And what is x component here? It's 0, right? 0 x component. So it's 0 times 2, 2 is the x component here, plus 1, which is the y component, times uh, negative 1. So this term is 0, this is negative 1, so it's negative 1. So a dot b is negative 1. Good. Which is also equal to so a dot b, and I'm going to just write this dot very clearly because right, that's the that is the product dot product is a b cosine of theta and this is the theta you're supposed to find as a part of this question and a is the magnitude b is also the magnitude 
So how do you know the magnitude? You can use the uh, Pythagorean theorem that we use in the first problem. So it's square root of um, one square, which is one, times square root of two square plus negative one square cosine of theta. You don't know theta yet, so it's just cosine of theta. That's equal to square root of one square is just one. Uh, this is so one times square root of four plus one, which is square root of five times cosine of theta. So this is square root of five cosine of theta. So negative one, so remember this equals that, right? They're the same thing. So negative one equals that. So negative one equals square root of five times cosine of theta. So cosine of theta equals negative one divided by square root of five. Right? So uh, theta is the inverse cosine of negative one divided by square root of five. All right, so let's use the calculator now. Now this one uh, is in the uh, in the trigonometric ratio format, right? It's sine and cosine. I cannot use this, so I have to flip it to cosine inverse. Okay. So remember, I need cosine inverse of that. So cosine inverse, and it calls it a cos, which stands for arc cosine, which is the cosine inverse of uh, negative one. So it's negative one divided by square root of, uh, where is the square root here? There you go, square root of five. So the angle you get is 116.5 degree. So that's 116.5 degree. Do not forget degree here. That is the unit. Okay, you cannot forget that. So the, the product between the two, the product of the two vectors, the dot product is negative one and the angle between them is 116.5. Now, before we move to the next one, let's make sure that this logically makes sense, okay? Can we draw this quickly? So, J is what? J is in the Y direction, right? So, if I have X and Y like that, then uh, J, I'll just use the pencil. So, J goes like that, right? It's upward in y direction how about b uh, b is a you know has plus plus um uh, x component so the x component goes like that and negative y component so the negative the y component goes like that so it's like th that. Okay, so the x component is positive, y component is negative. So yeah, it kind of makes sense, right, that this angle would be greater than 90 degree, but less than 180 degree. So it happens to be 160 degrees. So logically, this makes sense. Okay, so in this case, this is A and this is B. All right. Okay, next one. Now you'll notice here that you need a little bit more understanding of um, of vectors to solve this particular set of problems. Okay, so a is now the next one is uh, a vector a is three i plus j, and b is two i uh, minus j. Okay, so what is a dot b? 
using that same formula as before it's uh, 3 times 2 because 3 is here 2 is here the x components plus 1 which is the y component here times negative 1 which is the y component here which is 6 minus 1 equals 5 so 5 is the dot product here Uh, which is also equal to so a dot b is also equal to a b cosine theta which is um, square root of using what is what is a the magnitude is square root of three square plus one square right that's the magnitude of this vector a times uh, magnitude of b which is two square plus negative one square, which would be the same as positive one square uh, cosine of theta, which is equal to three square is nine. So nine plus one times four plus one cosine theta, which is equal to square root of um, 10 times square root of five, cosine theta okay um, so what is what is square root of 10 times square root of 5 by the way you can simplify this you can just say this is square root of 50 because it multiplies inside and square root of at 50 is 25 times 2 so this is the, then the square root of 25 times 2 is 5 square root of 2 but anyway I don't want to uh, go to that level of details. I'll just uh, use the calculator here. So square root of um, uh, You know what we can do this as a last step. Okay, let's just keep it the way it is So let's call this square root of 50 times cosine of theta Because you know you can multiply 10 and 5 inside the square root here. So it's that so what does this mean? It means 5 equals square root of 50 cosine theta right this equals that so 5 equals square root of 50 cosine theta so it means that cosine theta is 5 square root of 50 Okay, which means that theta is cosine inverse of 5 square root of 50. Right, so let's, we can use that, do that using the calculator. So uh, again, we go back to the inverse, cosine inverse of 5 divided by uh, square root of 50 45 so theta is 45 degree does this logically make sense let's draw let's draw So a is 3i plus j. So it's positive x-axis in the x-direction, positive in the y-direction. So it goes something like that. Okay, more in x-direction, less in y-direction, because 3i plus j. Right? That's a. What about b? b is positive in x-direction, but negative in y-direction. So it goes like that. So yeah, this kind of makes sense that this could be 45, right? This won't give you the exact answer, just drawing it by hand like this, but it tells you that, yeah, at least th this answer makes sense. If you hadn't gotten an answer that says 135 degree and you drew it like this and then something, it doesn't make sense, right? But this answer makes sense. Okay. Let's 
go to the next one. C is um, C is A is I plus four J. By the way, at this point, if you feel like you understood exactly how to do and you don't want to look at this solution, see, that's fine. Just skip ahead in the video and, and go to the next problem. Maybe you want to try this yourself. All of these that I'm doing, um, you should all be doing these with me, all right? Or at least maybe watch it once and then do it yourself, something. But always do it. Just watching me solve these, won't really you feel like you you understood and to some extent you'll understand it but that's not the same as doing it yourself so always problem practice the problems yourself how about this one so a dot b equals um, one times eight plus four times negative two which is 8 minus 8 equals 0. Okay, so the, mag the dot product is 0. Now, you don't really need to go any further because this is a dot b is a b cosine theta. And a and b are clearly not 0 right? 0 equals a, b cosine theta. a is not 0. b is not 0. So cosine theta must be 0. So just looking at this, you can say, well, cosine theta is 0. Sorry, there, there's no degree here. I wrote it by mistake. Uh, cosine theta is 0. Therefore, theta must be what? For what theta is cosine theta 0? It's 90 degree. This is degree. I talked about this briefly towards the end of my theory session. That when two vectors are at a at 90 degree, I'm going to draw two vectors here. This one and this one. When there are two, two of them are at a 90 degree, the dot product of them will be zero. If they're at 90 degrees, the dot product will be zero. And the reason is that uh, if you want to draw a projection of this vector, this tip onto this, there's no length here, right? If you want to draw, say similarly, you want to draw a projection of this onto that, there's no length. So they, they don't project onto each other. The projections are zero. And that's what the dot product gives you. It gives you the projection of, uh, one vector onto the other vector, and then those two multiplied. That is the multiplication of the two uh, projections. So that's why there's a cos theta here, okay, cosine theta. And the cosine theta is zero when theta is 90 degree. Okay, so in this case, you can just, by looking at this zero, you can say, and remember, these two, each of them is not zero. So you cannot have one vector itself as zero vector, right? Then it doesn't make sense. But in this case, A and B, neither of them is zero, but so cosine theta must be zero. Uh, therefore, theta must be 90 degree. Okay. Okay, uh, our last problem, and there are three of them here. It says, number five, add the vectors shown and then represent the resultant vector in, uh, in Cartesian form. So you have you have one vector here and one vector here. You have to add it, and you have been given the the uh, angles and the magnitudes. But the the angles are not necessarily with respect to x-axis. So you see, this is five. The magnitude is five. The angle is twenty-five degree with respect to this y-axis. This is forty-five degree with respect to x-axis. Here, these two are along x and y axis, and here there are three vectors. Oops. Here. here, there are three vectors this, that, and that. These three problems 
are make sure you do them yourself and understand them because in physics you will encounter these situations a lot this is like something like forces acting on a uh, on a mass or something like that right you you will see there are multiple forces acting and you need to find what the resultant force is so this is very critical let's try to solve them First one is, so this is problem number five. Uh, we have to write them in the Cartesian format. So the first one says, um, I have uh, one vector here. This, the, this, this is hand drawing, right? This is not very precise, but it gives you the, an idea what you're doing. 45 degree, and then another one here, which is 25 degree. And this magnitude is five. So you, there are multiple ways you can do this. But the easiest one that I think is like this. So let's call it something. Let's call this as A and this as B. Okay. So how would you write A? In a Cartesian format, uh, you need to know the x component and you need to know the y component. What is the x component of this? First of all, looking at this, it should be clear that the x component would be negative, right? Because it's pointing in that direction. The x component, if I were to draw like this, this is negative. Y component should be positive. And what are those? You can find those using this using trigonometry. So in this case, the x component should be negative of five times sine of theta, right? Sine of twenty-five degree. Is this clear? Why this is the case? It's not. I can I can draw it again. So you see this. This angle is 25 degree. So this component, this is the X component, right? This is the X component. This component is the, remember the opposite minus divided by hypotenuse. So sine of 25 degree is this X component divided by hypotenuse. And hypotenuse is five. This is five. So this is x divided by 5. And x is, let's call this as x. So sine of 25 equals x divided by 5. So therefore, uh, x is 5 multiplied by sine of 25 degree. But however, this is in the negative direction. So while the length is this, to get the actual x component, you have to take into account this negative direction. Okay. Now, there are more complicated ways of doing this, but this is this I find is very intuitive, right? So negative in this direction, uh, sine of 25 degree. And what about? So you have to put an i here for x component. Uh, what about the y component? Y component should be a positive. So, uh, and that would be five times cosine of theta, cosine of 25 degree here, right? Because this, this is your y component, and that is the cosine of theta times 5, right? 5 is the hypotenuse. So there you go. You have it. Okay, can we, we can use a calculator to do it, but let's first also write B. Okay, that way we can all do the calculations all together. B is, what about the x? Component x component should be positive, right? It's in positive direction, and uh, here in this case, it will be given by the cosine of this angle because you see it, it's the it's the adjacent. Okay, so this will be eight times cosine of forty-five degree. I. 
and y component would be the same in magnitude but it's going in the negative direction so it's going to be uh, negative 8 times sine of 45 j now is this clear or are you confused it is entirely possible that you're confused so let me make sure I, I clarify this point okay you'll first you'll notice well why is this sign here but then cosine here because we're talking about different angles okay this is not the standard theta that we have been using to represent the vector right this is with respect to y axis this is with respect to x axis but in, in the negative direction so you got to take the basic trigonometry in, into account right and the basic trigonometry says that if you if you remember that right if this was your theta then this is uh, opposite adjacent hypotenuse and sine and cosine are with respect to these right so sine of theta is uh, opposite divided by hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse here we're using the same principle the principle is that I, if i want this which is the x component in the negative direction it's negative of i have to use sine because that's the opposite of this angle right but here to get the x component this angle this is the different angle in this case it's the it's the um, uh, cosine of this angle that gives us the x component now it so happens that we get cosine 45 and for sine 45 they're the same right sine and 45 sine cosine 45 are the same in as a number but that's just by coincidence if this 45 was something else then you would have to use cosine of that angle okay uh, i hope this is clear um, hey if it's not clear uh, go to uh, in in our website there's a contact us session you know go there and Put your comment there saying hey I, I didn't really understand this explain it again i'll make another video all right so for now uh this is this gives you uh a and b and it says add the two vectors that's the question so you have to do a, a plus b so a plus b and to do this now you can add the x components which is negative 5 sine 25 degree plus 8 cosine 45 degree i plus 5 cosine 25 degree minus 8 uh, sine 45 degree j so i add these and add these now to use the calculator you can do it whichever way you prefer personally um, you could you could either write all of this at once or you can write them separately and add them together uh, either way is fine to make it less confusing maybe we can do uh, separately right you can write these numbers separately and then add them so let's say what is uh, sine of 25 is that times 5 it's times time negative 5 but we'll just write it as 5 so it's 2.11 so it's negative 2.11 because I, I skipped negative here i just wrote it here uh, plus 8 times um 8 times cosine of 40 so just cosine of 45 sorry i meant 45 cosine of 45 is that times 8 is 5.65 plus 5.65 i plus how about this bottom one um, this says cosine of 25 so cosine of 25 times 5 so you get 4.53 so it's 4.53 uh, here is minus 8 sine 45 degrees so let's do that uh, so sine of oops, 
sine of 45 degree is the same as cosine of 45 degree um, just for 45 degree okay um, which is 0.707 times 8 it's 5.65 but it's negative so we do negative uh, 5.65 j now this way you can split things up and calculate a little bit easier it's up to you so now you can do this calculation negative 2.11 plus 5.65 5.65 3.54 so 3.54 i plus uh, 4.53 4.53 .53 minus 5.65 minus 5.65 is uh, it's negative 1.12 j so this negative, I can just write it in the standard format, 3.54i minus 1.12j. Does this make sense looking at this, uh, looking at this picture up here? It says it should be positive in, in this direction and negative in that direction. Is that possible? I think it's possible. So the way I've drawn this five is, is not quite a, I feel like it's not um, fair. <laughs> I think five would be longer than that. So yeah, you would get a positive here and it's a little bit negative here. I think that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's go to the next one. By the way, the previous problem took a long time, right? Almost. Look at my watch it took about 30 minutes or something but do go through that because that those type of problems you'll encounter them quite a bit in uh, in in actual physics so i got this as 18 and this as four uh, let's call this a and b okay so this is a little bit gives you a little bit of a breather <laughs> compared to the last problem right the last problem was needed a little bit thinking and a lot of calculations here you also need thinking right thinking is never optional um, but it's easier so a is is four magnitude four and it's positive direction in y and there's no x component for a so this is just four j and b is what b is in just in x x direction so it's 18 i no j so there you go then that's it a plus b is 4i oh i'm sorry uh 18i plus 4j that's it so just by definition 18 plus 4 uh, 18 in x direction plus 4 in y direction all right the next one this one has three vectors Okay. So the first one is three in in that direction is thirty degree to the x-axis. Uh, next one is four in this direction is sixty degree in in the in the downward direction, and uh, this one is in that direction the six the magnitude is six so again let's call these something okay let's call it uh, a b c and let's try to solve them um, i would really like to fit it in one remaining page here so i'm going to start writing here hopefully you can read it uh, what is a what is a a only has x component there's no y component and this x component is in the negative direction. So this must be negative six i. Okay. What is b? b is, what is the x component? Use your trigonometry and draw it yourself, okay? 
for this 30 degree, B is going to be, the X component is going to be 3 times cosine of 30 degree. I plus plus 3 times sine of 30 degree J. Okay, if you if you're confused here, use your the trigonometry you have learned so far and convince yourself that this is indeed true. Cosine is x, uh, sine is, is y component. Okay, and then what is C? C has positive x component. So here B both x and both x and y components were in the positive direction. C the x component is in the positive direction, but the y is in the negative direction. So this C is going to be four times cosine of 60 degree in x direction plus, uh, actually not plus, negative. So it's minus four times sine of 60 degree j. Okay, the negative sign comes because it's in the downward direction. And you know this basically the 60 degree is in in, in 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 this direction, so the angle is the vector is pointing in negative y direction. So if I were to solve this, may, maybe make it a little bit uh, neater. It's negative six i uh, b is uh, uh, three times cosine 30, and th that's uh, three times cosine 30 is 2.59, so it's 2.59i plus sine 30. I don't need to do sine 30, it's half. So three minus uh, three times half is 1.5, so it's 1.5. J, oh, sorry, I realize that you're not seeing this. Okay, now it's better. So I first wrote 2.59, that's the X component, uh, which is three times cosine of 30, and three times sine of 30 is, three times sine of 30 is, uh, sine 30 is half, so three times half is 1.5 J component. And C is four times cosine 60. Uh, by the way, cosine 60 is the same as sine 30, which is half. So it's half times four is two i uh, minus sine 60, which is square root of three over two, but let's do it here. Um, so four times sine of, uh, sine of 60 is 3.46, but it's negative. So it's negative 3.46 j. And that's it then. Now you can add these, right? A plus well, here we go. A plus B plus C. That's the question, right? It's asked you to add all of them. So it's uh, negative six plus two point five nine plus two I uh, plus zero. Nothing here. Uh, plus 1.5 minus 3.46 j. Okay, so here you can just add these here and get the x and y components. So negative uh, negative 6 plus 2.59 plus 2 uh, plus 2. So that's negative 1.41i. And this should be a negative number, 1.5. So I'll just write it as negative. Uh, so that's 1.5 minus 3.46. So that's negative 1.69, negative 1.96, maybe for you. J. That is the answer.
Okay, so we are all done with this set of practice problems. Hopefully you learned how to solve vector problems and uh, pra do practice these yourself. Don't just depend on watching a video. Uh, you will benefit from learning these techniques. So in physics, vectors appear quite frequently and you have to know how to add them, subtract them, in some cases multiply them, or how to interpret them. What do they mean? It becomes really important. Okay, so that's all I have for now. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.